In my time being a part of the fantasy community on YouTube and social media, I have seen more hype for The Sword of Kaigen by Emma Wong than I have for any other book. More praise, more love, and basically zero criticism for this book. I had to find out if this book is properly rated. So I read it a couple of weeks ago and I had to really sit on it to decide what I thought about this book in the end. And after finishing it, I'm really surprised with the praise that the sort of Kaigen receives. Had I not known about the praise this book receives before reading it, I think I would have read the book and been like, oh yeah, that was fun, that was good, I'll give it about a 3.5 to a 4 out of 5. But going into the book, knowing how praised it is, I really went into it looking at, all right, what do people love about this? But because I went into it with that attitude, looking at what people loved about it, I was able to get more out of the book and I found it more that four to four and a half out of five sort of read. And I can definitely see why it's highly rated. Though I'm also quite surprised by it being as highly rated as often as it is, because I wouldn't think this would be a book for everyone. So firstly, let's dive into what the book is about and what sets it apart from other fantasy books. So firstly, we're set in a very Asian-inspired world, very much Avatar The Last Airbender inspirations. We have different empires with elemental powers. We're following the Kaiganese Empire, which have like waterbending abilities. And we are following a village on the border of the Kaiganese Empire that is home to the best warriors, the best benders in this culture, in this society. And the land that this village is settled on is known as the Sword of Kaigan, just kind of being that protective border sort of thing. And the family that we're following is the Matsuda family. And they're the strongest of the warriors in this village. We're following a mother and a son from this family. So we're following Masaki, who married into the family. She is from another strong family as well. And her whole purpose there is to create strong sons, to create strong warriors for this village, for this sort of Kaigan region. So we're in a very warrior-focused society. Then we're also following Masaki's oldest son, as he's starting to mature and take on more responsibility in his life. Now, where this story gets interesting and starts becoming different from regular fantasy is, all right, so we've got this village on the border. We're hearing things about the neighboring country where they might be attacking. We're hearing things about the Kaiganese government where they might be hiding things from their own people. And our village on the border is having to look after themselves. So the feeling that you're getting going through this book is that the story is going to be about an invading country trying to take over this village in order to take over the Kaiganese Empire, but we're also finding out something interesting is going on under the Kaiganese Empire, and we're like, what is going on here? But that actually doesn't become the prominent role of the story. We have things that go on with that for the first 60% of the book, but the last 40% of the book, there's no action, no fighting. It's more looking at the characters and the characters dealing with their own internal conflict. So it's not a conflict between countries so much as an internal conflict, where in most books, our character's internal conflict mirrors the conflict going on outside. So our character's are going on a journey, whilst a continent's at war, for example, but usually there'll be a big battle at the end to climax and bring things to a nice ending. That battle in this book takes place in the 60% mark. We spend a lot of time in the later half of the book exploring our characters, we we're really looking at Masaki, the mother, having a deep dive into her relationship with her husband, which has been very cold. As Masaki grew up with a warrior background, she's well-traveled, she's seen the world. But for the last 15 years that she's been married, she's been told she's just a housewife. She is just someone there to have strong sons, to continue her husband's line. That's been her whole purpose and that's all she's been told. She doesn't have many loving relationships in her life. She has very different relationships with her kids to what we're used to in Western society. So we're really getting a deep dive into the relationships of this family in the latter half of the book, rather than an exploration of what's been going on with the other countries. So it's a very different sort of story because in a fantasy book, we get the big battle at the end and then things wrap up. Here, things don't get wrapped up with what's going on with the invading country and things don't get wrapped up with what's going on with the Kaganese government. So that gets left with loose ends, which for me kind of ruined the story because that's what I go into fantasy for, is those big nationwide conflicts. And here we're more focused on the internal and just looking at a mother's outlook when she's been in such an interesting place and she's coming to terms with maybe she can be a warrior 
and a mother and have a partner too, but trying to get that and her past is coming back out and there's lots of different things going on for her and that's really what this story is about. It's the exploration of family dynamics and relationships in this sort of culture. So the characters and their themes are the main parts of this story and they're fantastic. The plot, lots of loose ends, so that part didn't work for me, but I understand now that that wasn't really the main part of the story. The other things I haven't discussed yet, the writing style and the world building and the action scenes, they were all phenomenal. The writing style was just super easy to read. I read this and listened to it on the audiobook. And yeah, you can just fly through this so quickly. There's really big chapters. So each chapter, you kind of get a lot of meat to it. I really like that. Um, diving into the world building. So I really love just having water bending in a book. For me, it was a copy of Avatar the Last Airbender for the magic system. But the way it was written and confined with sword fighting, super fun. I absolutely love that aspect of it. So as a whole, looking at the sword of Kaigen, I can see why it's so popular. I could see why it wouldn't work for a lot of people, especially if you're going in, into it looking for like your regular classic fantasy story. It is more that character exploration rather than a fantasy story of epic proportions where countries are going to war and you'll get a nice, neat ending where everything gets wrapped up. So yeah, please let me know what your th thoughts were on the sort of Kaigen. And please let me know what you took out of the book. What were the things that made this book so great for you? What were the things that maybe didn't work? Did you really relate to Misaki or Mimoru? Or once the action wrapped up at the 60% mark, would you have wanted the story to go a little quicker? Or do you want a sequel to actually find out what's going on with the government of this country and if there's going to be a war? Please let me know.